Welcome to Conversations with Ken, a podcast where we discuss relevant topics in investing. I'm Ken Crawford, Senior Portfolio Manager with Argent Capital Management. With me today again is Scott Harrison, uh, another one of the portfolio managers at Argent Capital. Scott? Hey Ken, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. For those of you who don't remember, Scott works with me on the large cap strategy, and I try to stay out of his way with the dividend select strategy. So, Scott, you've only been at Argent for how many years? Um, I started uh, not too long ago, about uh, 22 years ago. 22 years. So, Scott, obviously a rookie, and uh, I've only got 20 years at Argent, so we're still trying to figure out where the light switches are. But... Um, getting back to or to the market, um, last couple of podcasts, Scott, we've talked about some of the headwinds that are obviously affecting the markets this year. One of those headwinds is the lingering impact from COVID. And that's right. And uh, uh, really the consequent supply chain issues, um, especially with the China zero COVID policy um, that we've witnessed. Right. And then we've got war in Europe where Russia um, obviously invading Ukraine and now taking trying to take over pieces of Ukraine. That's right. Uh, war in Europe uh, has had a broad impact really across the globe, um, certainly from uh, surging oil prices that we saw earlier this year. Um, inflation uh, it certainly has had an impact on inflation. Um, and consequently, uh, some of the actions that we're seeing now by the Fed to try and rein in that inflation. Right. And, and people have uh, were surprised at the first 75 basis point raise, and then we've had two more. And, and the question, I think, has gone from not if the Fed is going to raise, but how far, and then um, the possibility or lack thereof of a soft landing. Um, you're, you're hitting on the key topics uh, that, that we're talking about on a daily basis. We're certainly getting those questions from clients today. And, and with what's going on in the overall stock market and the headlines, it certainly seems like a negative uh, environment for us all, uh, obviously. Um, but this is where as active uh, stock pickers, active managers, uh, that our investment team's hard at work. And we're actually identifying some opportunities that we think with the longer term time horizon, um, are going to provide us some valuable opportunities for, for our clients. Well, that's, that's a great backdrop. And obviously, with the market down 20 plus percent, um, people are feeling low. So where, Scott, are you finding some, some stocks of interest for you? You bet, Ken. This is always uh, our most fun part of our job. Um, it's really the passion that, that brought us all into this industry is to talk about individual stocks. Um, so what I thought I would do is just kind of start with a, a well-known company um, that might be a little bit controversial, uh, at least looking at the timing, um, and then a few more hidden gems potentially. Um, so the first stock I would start with is Amazon. Um, certainly, uh, you know, our listeners have heard of Amazon. Right. Uh, it has been a dominant player. We all know of their cloud platform, AWS, um, and certainly their e-commerce business. Um, you know, one of the things that really makes us interested in Amazon today um, are all the other businesses um, that will be uh, coming to the forefront, we think, over the next couple of years. Um, in particular, their logistics business, mm-hmm. um, which they have spent billions of dollars over the past several years building. Um, We are finally at a point where we think that investment, um, at least in the near term, um, is behind us. Um, And as a company, they can start leveraging that power. So uh, while some of the news from FedEx uh, recently is negative of the overall economy, um, it wouldn't surprise us to see some of the impact of Amazon's improved competitive position here. Um, Also, uh, why we like it now with interest rates rising, even though interest rates are rising, um, the stock uh, trades at a five-year Uh, low in terms of relative valuations. Um, And quite frankly, we're optimistic that cash flow could surprise investors going forward. So um, while it is a a large tech company that that individuals uh, point to as uh, potentially being negatively impacted on interest rates, um, going forward, we see plenty of positive catalysts that over the next three to five years make us enthused. Right. Uh, Slowdown in retail and consumer certainly affect them. But Hard to argue that that online retail is not going to continue to take share going forward. That's right. Any other 
stocks that pique your interest? Yeah, I would, you know, one of the themes you're going to hear from me are, are the areas, uh, the beaten down areas of the stock market this year. And especially as we move into 2023, why they look more interesting to us. Um, a company um, that we uh, recently increased our position in our large cap portfolio, CDW. Um, they're a value added tech reseller. Um, you can think of them as sitting really in between the client um, and the vendor. Um, and not only uh, do they provide hardware uh, services, um, they also provide solutions and consulting. Um, they're a broad uh, based company that continues to move up the value chain, so to speak. We see that as improved returns, an improved growth profile, and a company that just consistently has grown at more than 2x the overall tech spend. Um, at 16 times earnings, it's another one of those just best in breed, well-run companies that can allocate capital. Um, and so we've increased our position and it's a name we're enthused about. And with potential pullback in hardware, software sales, one of the things that would differentiate CDW is their services because if you've got a network, you've got to keep it up and, and you call them to make sure that that happens. That's right. Everything, everything from install to warranty service, um, to IT security. Um, they, they are your backbone uh, for uh, governments, education, and small and large companies. Okay, any other stocks? Yeah, I think you know this is an interesting one that I'll, I'll wrap it up on. Uh, Charles River Labs. Um, so Charles River, what are they? Uh, they are a contract research organization, a CRO, mm -hmm. uh, for pharma and biotech companies. What does that mean? Um, that simply means that they provide products and services that support pharma and biotech as they try and do research and development. Um, you can think of everything from genetically modified rats, rats. and monkeys um, to also safety um, and monitoring services as trials go on. Um, so this is just another uh, company that produces attractive returns. Um, it's experienced significant declines this year and worries of a slowdown. Um, but as we look out over the next few years, they just continue to increase their competitive position. Um, they have a dominant position um, in research models to pharma and biotech. And while it's a company uh, that goes under the radar, we think it provides uh, value uh, for investors moving forward. Um, and that's Charles Rivers, and uh, the ticker symbol on that is CRL. And obviously pharma, 17-year um, patent cliffs for every drug that they ever have. And meanwhile, they've got a lot of cash, so they've got to refill those pipelines. And going to Charles River makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And, and when we look at growth over the last five years, it's been around 12%. When we look at growth over the last 10 years for the company, it's been around 12% revenue. Revenue growth is what I'm referring to. Um, so despite all of the headlines in between, just very consistent growth. Right. So uh, a few stocks you mentioned, uh, some of them a little bit dinged. Are there areas even in this down market where you're not particularly enthused? Certainly. Um, on the attractive side, I mentioned some, some stocks uh, that have been significantly impacted this year in a negative way. Um, I guess uh, conversely to that, the areas that that we're less enthused are those quote unquote defensive areas of the stock market. And, and you can think of that as uh, utilities uh, is an example of that. Um, utilities has been the best performing sector in the stock market this year, um, certainly over concerns of growth and worry, um, but investors realize that and that's an area that, that they favored. So now with utilities offering very limited growth prospects, um, and trading at a 20% premium to the overall stock market, it's just not something that today uh, provides much attractive uh, value for us and for our clients. So overpaying for safety makes safety a little less safe. <laughs> that is exactly right. <laughs> okay. Anything else to talk about? No, I, I appreciate the time, Ken. Okay. Well, that will wrap it up for us. Thank you very much, Scott Harrison, Portfolio Manager, Argent Capital. This is Ken Crawford another portfolio manager also at Argent Capital saying thank you all for listening and good luck as you go forward. Thank you for listening to Conversations with Ken. For now, stay safe, stay well, and thank you for investing your time with us. This 
podcast represents opinions from portfolio managers of Argent Capital Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor, and reflect the portfolio manager's judgment on the date of this podcast and are subject to change. The podcast is meant for informational purposes only, is not intended to serve as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. It is also not a research report and is not intended to serve as a basis for any investment decision. All investments involve risk, and the past performance of a security or financial product does not guarantee future results or returns. Investors should consider their investment objectives and risk carefully before investing.